We get in touch with such a realm, such a volume, that it is impossible to describe nor interpret through human reason, in human words, using human thinking models. Exactly because it is a lot bigger than all of that. A human being is a raindrop, a grain of sand compared to this mass. But our ability to analyze, to observe and describe is very likely the only ability that we can be conscious of. It is our only tool. There is no other given to us. No other. Therefore, we will use what we have and we will try to use it with the greatest efficiency in order to get for ourselves from these small capabilities greater ones. And this will be our common hypertask for this whole course. Quite a long course needs to be said. It is really very long. With the previous group we started to work in 2013. And now, only now, we moved on to the system of monotheistic religions after having followed a long path of studying polytheism and the theory that you now are starting to learn. And not because we have nothing else to do. And also not because it is not possible to tell it in short. It can be summarized. In principle, I could tell you everything in half an hour and we would live here happy and with no intention of meeting each other ever again. But our objective is slightly different. I have to pass on to you a deep understanding of the magical structure and you would need to receive this deep understanding internalize it and learn how to use it in a practical way. And this means that we will have to spend time on this because information cannot be internalized immediately by the human mind. The life of a human takes place in time and the time factor in this case appears to be important. I'd say very likely an essential condition for the correct assimilation of information. These are the rules of the game, unfortunately. Although we would rather like it to have it faster. Although we would rather like to have it fast. We all want to fall asleep in the evening as humans and wake up as wizard magi, don't we? Let's be honest, everyone wants this that something special would happen and it would open within the mind a certain hidden compartment hit here to kept close by some unknown bad guys, naturally, and all of a sudden justice triumphs. And in the morning you wake up as a complete wizard magus and lord of not only your own destiny but that of a great number of destinies. Gaining this way the much sought after power over a situation or at least over one's own wishes. But unfortunately, in this reality, the one in which we now exist, in these conditions and game rules, we have not been given the possibility to instantly resolve issues that way. But we have been given the opportunity to look for ways to do so. And we are actually coping pretty well with the given task. If in the past magic disciplines in different schools were studied for 20, 30 years, what we are doing now, should our predecessors have looked at our results, they would certainly be in awe. Because they didn't have the capability to proceed as quickly. And even though one's life was way shorter back in the times we're talking about, it was incomparably shorter. They did not see any other way except for dedicating their entire life to mastering, for example, the perception of the earth element. We learned to do so in just a few months. And with good practice and absence of laziness, it happens even faster. Exactly. 
It happens even faster. Our predecessors wouldn't even dream of such results, which means that we are moving in the right direction. And that with every step, the process of acceleration, transformation, assimilation of information and gaining knowledge, very specific knowledge and not lesser specific skills, we do better. And this means that we are doing everything right. But still not entirely. The more we succeed, the more we want. The more we easily succeed, the more we want to think that the rest will be just as easy. When we are faced with a situation that tells us the opposite, a disappointment may come over us, along with an effect that we call a throwback, as if you had a head-on collision with a wall. And that wall will, of course, send you back. And you will find yourself in that point in space and time that you kind of considered you have overcome a long time ago. And yet this throwback takes place. This is hard to take for one's consciousness. And only a few find the inner strength to get over it. But this, too, is a rule of the game. Because, of course, only the strongest, the most resilient, must make it to the end. During this course, we will equally learn how to gain the resilience, understand which algorithms develop it. Resilience, what it is needed for, when it is appropriate to apply, and when it is not. Because all of these are tools, tools for magic growth tools for the magic becoming. To get a hold of these tools or any such tool, colleagues, is possible only by going to the primary source, the source that has created this tool, not from whom has stolen it, not from the one who is using it now, not from who takes credit for its authorship, but the true progenitor. This is a law of magic. Therefore, one of our tasks will be to recognize, to sense, to see, to secure support and receive the right to apply these algorithms, these tools of magic mastery, which gradually but inevitably turn a human being into something much more. That what we call a magus. That what we call a magical consciousness. And this is the path we will be taking. This is the path we will be working on together.